So, the only reason I'm here today is because of my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, I make a show online, it's a music show, it's called The Shruti Box. Uh, what it is, is I make a new music video every couple of weeks, and I, uh, I look around for talented uh, young instrumentalists and vocalists, and uh, we collaborate and we usually do rearrangements of um, classical or semi-classical uh, um, uh, pieces of music. <clears throat> so I started this channel last April, and I remember I uploaded my first video, and after three days of uploading it, it had 100 views, and I thought that was awesome. So uh, I decided to do another one, and in the same amount of time, it had uh, gotten 120 views. So I liked this trend, and I decided to keep doing it, so I did, and uh, here we are. It's been uh, about six months now, and my channel has almost five million views. Thank you. And uh, if anybody in the audience has been supporting the videos, thank you so much. Uh, I really owe you guys everything. Um, so you may be wondering, why is there a white guy up here playing Indian classical music? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I, yeah, I play a Western instrument uh, with the help of a computer, probably the least traditional instrument I can think of. But uh, it's, it's classical music. Well, actually, I've been playing classical music for a while. Uh, I started with Western classical music. I got my degree from a conservatory in Boston. And uh, while I was studying in college, I, I really wasn't satisfied with Western classical music. I wanted to I wanted to come to India to study the rich tradition of Hindustani music. So I was extremely fortunate. After I graduated, I received a scholarship, uh, and I was able to come to Mumbai to study with the legendary flute player, Hari Prasad Shirazia. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been such an honor learning with him. Um, he is absolutely phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, whenever I tell people this, they always say, oh, it must have been incredibly different studying in the West and then coming to India and being immersed in the very traditional Gurukul uh, method of learning that's however many thousands of years old. And uh, yeah, it is pretty different. Um, for starters, uh, in the Gurukul, we have class with uh, our teacher um, for two hours every day. In the West, uh, the standard is one hour with a private teacher once a week. Um, uh, in Western classical music, you're constantly reading music um, while looking at a page of sheet music. You're reading the notes. No matter if you're practicing or performing, you're always reading off a page. In Indian music, you don't ever read notes, ever. So that was a little adjustment. Um, but, you know, here's the funny thing. It never really felt different to me. I'm still the same person. I'm still playing the same instrument. I'm still practicing many of the same things. Uh, somehow, the music is the same. So let me talk a little bit about uh, the music business side of things because it's an unfortunate fact that uh, unless uh, a musician or artist cannot support themselves by doing their art, that tradition is going to die away fairly quickly. Um, so in the last uh, couple of years, there have been a num number of um, advancements for independent artists and musicians. Uh, those are recording technology. It's now extremely uh, affordable and available for pretty much everybody. Secondly, the internet and social media um, reaches practically everybody in the, across the globe. So what this does is uh, it, it equalizes the playing field a little bit between independent musicians and record labels. And for somebody like me, who's doing something a little bit unusual, something that a record label may or may not be completely interested in, like playing classical Indian music on a Western instrument, um, this is an extremely valuable business model. I, uh, and there's many, uh, many, other, many other musicians on YouTube who, who do the same thing. They'll record a song and they'll upload it to YouTube and um, within days it can get millions of views, reach millions of fans and then uh, they will sell thousands, perhaps more, uh, in MP3 downloads. And in this way they do absolutely everything themselves. They create the music and they distribute the music and it's, it's, all, it's all under their own control. I think there's a general misconception that classical music uh, is losing its stance in the culture. Uh, people think that it's not profitable, 
that people think, you know, there's no demand for it. The younger generation doesn't really care for it. Um, I don't think that any of those things are true. I think we just need to present it in the right way. If you look at uh, the most popular videos on YouTube, what immediately strikes you is that quality of content wins over production value. So you really don't need anything fancy uh, to make a good video. And when I make my videos, it's simply me playing an instrument and then the camera is on a tripod over there. That's, that's it. So uh, the other part of this uh, social media, um, a social media independent musician business model is the listeners, uh, the fans online. They really have a lot of power in what, in what uh, the music transforms into. So I would encourage all of you, if you're not already, go onto YouTube and go onto Facebook and keep your eyes and ears open for um, talented musicians who are independent and on YouTube because there's hundreds of them. Um, so I would just, uh, <clears throat> just like to conclude now by showing you a couple of clips of videos that I've done recently. Um, there's going to be three videos. Unfortunately, you don't have time to show all of them. Um, but if you want to see the full versions, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash the Shruti Box. Okay, thank you very much. Nini baga, magari sa, nini baga.